Oh, hey, Brenda, how's it going? It's Gunnar Nelson, your friend from Nashville, Tennessee, reaching out to you, wishing you a great day. Hope whatever you're doing, wherever you are, you're having an awesome time. You're laughing a lot, smiling a lot, uh, not getting too crazy because people get annoyed with that. You know how that is. But, uh, okay, a couple of things. Um, we've gone back and forth with what you want from this cameo, and I'm just going to use my best judgment, which is going to be a challenge because I'm never going to be president. What can I say with that? But, uh, okay, a sentimental car. So I guess you figured out that there are a couple things that I have a fondness for in my heart. I love classic cars. Always have, always will. Uh, sentimental cars, yeah. Actually, I've got a pretty good story on that. Now, I've, I've got a beautiful 1956 Ford F100 pickup that's kind of like a teal green that I love. It's a show truck. Uh, the inside has been tooled up. The leather's been tooled up like the acoustic guitar cover that I have with my name on it. It's like my dad's. It's pretty amazing. Um, that's a very fancy schmancy car. But to be honest with you, the, the car that I have um, closest to my heart is my first one. It was a 1953 Chevy half-ton pickup. It was a five window. And when I bought it, I bought it for my Uncle Mark. He had just acquired it. It was rust-free, but man, it was ugly. This thing was disgusting. This thing um, looked like a gardener truck. It had Bondo and dents and, you know, no paint and all that. And it was really, really old. Now, this would have been 1985? I think, no, 1984 would have been when I bought it. And we're talking power nothing. Three on the tree, um, stick shift thing, um, no power brakes. Uh, it was crazy, but... I, I had a deal with my uncle. I bought that car for 1200 bucks, And the deal was, if I did everything that I could in two years worth of auto shop to fix that particular truck, to rewire it, rebuild the engine, get it running great, if I got that all done, he agreed to do the cosmetic work on it. So that would be the chrome and the paint. It's a fantastic deal. That was really cool for him to do that. And lo and behold, I did. I actually got all the mechanical stuff done going into uh, the summer before my senior year at Palisades High School. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so when I first got it, uh, the school that I went to at Palisades, it was kind of a hoity-toity school. A lot of kids were really wealthy, and they were driving. Back in the day, the car to have would be like a Volkswagen Scirocco or a Mustang GT or a Camaro. And, you know, here I come rolling in to the parking lot there in a gardener truck with wobbly wheels and rusty and, and the whole thing. And I just got laughed at. But I had the last laugh because when I actually showed up for the first day of my senior year and all those kids had those plastic fantastics and I drove up in a classic. It was like a Mr. Miyagi moment from the Karate Kid. I mean, it was gleaming. Fire engine red, wide white wall tires, gleaming chrome. And I was truly the only kid with a classic in the entire school. It was pretty badass. And that was the truck that Matthew and I used to go back and forth from the Palisades there from Brentwood all the way up onto Mall Hall to our dad's house where our mom had made us move our musical instruments to do our rehearsals. Um, I can't believe our parents let us drive that truck around because, like I said, it was power nothing. No power steering, no power brakes. I mean, it was a death trap. Um, very, very heavy, unable to stop. But I got really good at driving it, and it never let us down. Like one of those old cars, they're built to last. They're not built to uh, replace. They're built to repair. You know, it was a different philosophy. You were coming out of World War II in 1945, and just a few years later, 1953, they made this truck. And again, the philosophy was coming out of the war, you don't waste anything. You know, you, you sit there, and this thing was designed to repair with uh, tractor tools from a John Deere. So if you were a farmer and had a John Deere tractor, and the tools for it, and you knew how to fix the tractor, you could also fix this 53 Chevy pickup truck. That makes a lot of sense to me. And it's just what we enjoyed. So our entire club career in Los Angeles, building our chops and our brand and going out there and playing a lot, we did that with this Fire Engine Red 1953 Chevy half-ton pickup truck. Um, I wound up selling that truck after our father died when I decided to learn how to play the guitar. And I needed to buy my first electric guitar. I had no money at the time. And so the only thing I really had to, uh, to, to barter to sell was that 53 truck. And I sold it to my Uncle Mark's best friend, Peter. And Peter is kind of like, we call him Uncle Peter. He's always been around since we were babies. He has that truck to this day. He actually took that truck down to the bare metal, 
frame off restoration with a really expensive guy and just brought it to show condition. It is his favorite, favorite thing. And I tease him every time I, I, I see him or I talk to him, hey man, when are you gonna sell me that truck? And, and for years, for 35 years, like, you know, just I'm gonna get buried in the truck, Gunner, don't ask me about it anymore. So, I don't know if you caught wind of this thing. Matthew and I filmed this little uh, episodic from when we were up in Minot, North Dakota on our Christmas tour. And we, uh, we actually found an exact copy just by happenstance. We were driving by a Chevy dealership and it caught the corner of my, I mean, it's like, damn, it looks like, like El Truco. It looks like the first truck. And there it was, a 1952, one year off, exact same truck, five window, fire engine red, three on the tree, power nothing uh, truck. And it was exactly like that high school truck. And I had just bought the, the 56 show truck and got it restored. I was not in the market whatsoever for another truck. But I couldn't let this one go, Brenda. It's like one of those things. It was like a sign. Okay, so uh, Matthew and I, we rented a trailer when we were in the middle of this tour. And we picked up in the middle of winter, which is insane because it was like 30 degrees below, and a solid block of ice up there in a two-wheel drive truck pulling the trailer. It wasn't even four-wheel drive. We loaded that truck onto our trailer and we drove all the way from Minot, North Dakota. Look at a map, it looks like it's like the Canadian border, it's right there. All the way in the middle of winter, all the way down to Nashville. And we got here safe and sound. So um, we actually have it now, and I'm actually picking it up tomorrow. So that is the answer to your question. I know it's a long answer to a very simple question, but as you can tell, I'm really passionate about that stuff. I really am. So. That would be my answer to you. It would be that 1953 Chevy half-ton pickup that I restored with my two hands and I made look awesome that safely got me to all of my club gigs when I was working my way up and that I have found a reproduction of and I will be enjoying this week for the rest of my life to remind me of where I've come from. So it would be that, uh, that Chevy pickup truck. I'll post some pictures of it. Uh, I, they, we actually did that episodic, and I'm sure you follow that. But we've done some work on it and because uh, we can't let things well enough alone, and I think you're going to dig it. So anyways, this cameo has gone on forever. In the next one, I'll sing you another song, and I'll, I'll write one just for you. But until then, look, have a great day. Thank you for supporting us. Lots of love to you. Um, you get the honor of having the longest cameo I've ever done. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, Brenda. See ya.